This is the all-new 2024 Kados Mine Mini Portable Workstation, and when comparing it to the original model, we've got upgrades across the board. A faster 16-core CPU, better integrated graphics, faster I.O. like Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4, but they've still managed to pack everything into this super slim form factor. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new 2024 Kados Mine. We've also got their upgraded graphics dock, and if you're not familiar with the Mine series from Kados, basically what we've got here is a micro portable workstation. The Mine graphics dock has been upgraded with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It's actually a pretty powerful little setup once you put everything together. And last year, we took a look at the first generation Kados Mine. It's actually a great performer, but with this one here, we've got a much more powerful 16 core, 22 thread CPU. As you can see, it's absolutely tiny. It's actually not that much bigger than a cell phone. Now, we do need space in here for cooling and the internal battery, which will allow us to put this into hibernation mode so we can boot this up super quickly. But it's a full-fledged desktop PC. Out of the box, it's running Windows 11, but you could always install Linux on it if you want to, because after all, it is running an x86 CPU. Inside of the box, along with the new 2024 Kados Mine, we're going to get a 64-watt power supply and USB Type-C cable. We've also got a user manual, but you can always head over to their website. This is coming in with the same form factor as the first-generation Kados Mine, so if you did buy one and you have some accessories, this will work with them. This does have an SSD pre-installed internally, but down here at the bottom, we can actually pop this off and add another 2230 M.2 SSD. This time around, this is PCIe 4.0. We can add up to a two terabyte drive. I believe that's what they make in the 2230s. And right down here, we've got what could be the most important port on the Kados mine, the mine length. It's a proprietary Kados port made for their extra accessories. And with the new version here, the 2024 Kados mine, it's running at PCIe X8 5.0 bandwidth speed. So we can get a max speed up to 256 giga transfers per second. It also supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 HDMI 2.1, and we can get 10 amps into the unit, so we can power the unit over the mine link also. Taking a look at the unit, up front, not much going on. We've got our power button with an LED indicator. On the side here, just some ventilation for the built-in cooling system. And around back, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, full-size HDMI 2.0, one Thunderbolt 4 and one USB 4 port. So on the original Kados mine, that's one thing we were missing. We didn't have USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, or Thunderbolt 4. This means we can actually connect an eGPU to one of these ports. Now, I will tell you that the mine link on the bottom is going to be much faster. You're going to get a much more stable connection. But if you wanted to save some money and you've already got an eGPU dock laying around, you could definitely get by using Thunderbolt 4. We will be getting over to the new Mine graphics dock in just a bit because that's really going to open this thing up. But when it comes to the base unit itself, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. It's actually upgraded from a 13th gen Intel Tiger Lake, 16 cores, 22 threads, 6 performance cores up to 4.8, 8 efficiency cores up to 3.8, and 2 low power efficiency cores up to 2.5. Built-in Intel Arc i GPU up to 2.25 GHz with 8 XE cores. We've got that Intel NPU, and you can get this with either 16 or 32 GB of LP DDR5 RAM at 6400, and their 64GB model actually uses LP DDR5X at 7467. Setting up the Kados Mind is super simple. I've got it plugged into an HDMI monitor, 65 watt power supply, go into one of the USB Type-C ports here. Now this will work in single cable operation mode, and this means if you've got a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in and power out, I'd say up to 65 watts, then you can run it off of a single cable, but the monitor I have here doesn't support that. Just go ahead and turn it on. It's gonna boot right into Windows for us. And real quick, I'll give you a look. We've got that Intel Core Ultra 7 155H. This is the 32 gig model, so we've got 6400 megahertz RAM. And I'm going to move over to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Moving right into Windows here, as you can see, we've got that Ultra 7 155H, 16 cores, 22 threads, one terabyte drive installed in this unit, plus we've got that slot on the bottom. And of course, we've got the Intel Arc graphics. When I originally reviewed the first Kados Mind, we didn't have any custom software, but with the recent updates, we've got what's known as Mind. This is going to allow us to easily update everything, tweak and tune the performance, 
So we've got our device info up here, device mode when unplugged, hibernate. Remember, we've got that built-in battery, sleep, use battery. I'm just going to go to hibernate here, power mode, and this is really relying on the Windows power mode. We're balanced right now. Smart charging, we can update the drivers, and if we plug in another CADOS device, it'll also detect that device and give us updates for that also. I've gone through, updated the BIOS on this. That was the only thing that needed updating right now, and we're in balanced mode. So I wanted to check out what kind of TDP we're running at here. Uh, we're in balanced mode right now. I'm gonna stress this out with CPU-Z right down here. Hardware info running, it jumps up to 45 watts. I'm not exactly sure how long we have this 45 watt boost for, but it definitely goes on for quite some time. And we're still only in balanced mode. In performance, we do have a boost up to 65 watts in some cases, but since I've been running for a little while now, I think we're only gonna go up to around 50, yeah. But this thing running at a 45 watt TDP is going to put out some really good performance. And if you wanted to use this as an everyday desktop slash workstation, do some spreadsheets, you could get some photo editing done. You could even do some video editing on this thing. It's actually a really fast little system. And the first thing I wanted to show off were some benchmarks. Geekbench 6, single core, 2,260. Multi-core, 12,057. Looking pretty good here. And we are in performance mode right now. I also ran a GPU benchmark using 3D Mark Time Spy. We got a 3,608, and I also ran a Geekbench AI benchmark using the built-in iGPU. This is Direct LM using Onyx. And keep these scores in mind. We will be coming back to them in just a second when we connect the graphics dock. But another thing I always like to test is gaming, and we're using the iGPU right now. We've got Fallout 4 low settings 1080p, not bad. I mean, it's actually handling it just fine. We're over 100 FPS. I've got this connected to a 120 hertz monitor. It runs great like this. I would probably just lock it down at 60, but yeah, we can definitely play Fallout 4 here. Next up, Forza Horizon 5, 1080p, low settings with XESS set to balanced. We're seeing an average of around 73 FPS. Again, we've got a pretty playable experience here on this super small form factor unit. And the final game I tested was Cyberpunk 2077. I did have to drop this down to 900p. We're using XESS set to performance, and this is one of those games that has always given us issues on these Arcai GPUs, but you know, we can either connect an eGPU over USB 4, Thunderbolt 4, or of course use the Mine Graphics dock and really up that GPU performance. And speaking of the brand new Mine Graphics, this is actually an RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. This is not a laptop variant. It's actually a desktop variant of that RTX 4060 here. And all we need to do is go ahead and pull the grommet off. We'll set this right on top. It's got a magnet in it, so it kind of attaches really nicely. And now once we boot this unit up, we've got an RTX 4060 Ti. It also adds a ton of extra I.O., like a full-size SD card slot up front. And by the way, this graphics dock can be used independently on other devices as a Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 eGPU. Round back, we've got our power input, fully powered by itself, two full-size HDMI ports, display port, three more USB ports, and Ethernet on this unit. This is just as easy to set up as the mind all by itself. We're just going to place the mind right in here. We'll go ahead and power it up, and all of our power is going to be going through the mine link. HDMI is coming out of the eGPU, and we've got power input from the wall to the GPU itself. And now, instead of using the built-in Arcai GPU, which we still have access to, we can use this NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. The mine software detected that we have the dock connected. Now that I've got the mine attached to the graphics dock, We'll open up the Mind app, and like I mentioned, once we connect a compatible device, it's going to show up right here. We can update the firmware if there is any firmware updates. Indicator LED color, we can change this right on the front. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti with 16 gigs of VRAM. So this is using GDDR6, and if we take a look here, we've got that Ultra 7 155H along with the RTX 4060 Ti. So this is really going to up that GPU and AI performance on this unit. And just so we can get an idea of what kind of power this GPU is pulling, 
up to around 170 watts here. And keep in mind, it's not a laptop variant of that RTX 4060 Ti. This is the desktop chip inside of this unit here. So we can really get the maximum performance out of this GPU. I did run 3D Mark Time Spy one more time just to show you the performance uplift. We're now scoring a 12,520 as opposed to the iGPU with a 3,608. And when it comes to that Geekbench AI score, you can see just across the board, it is trumping the built-in iGPU, and we definitely knew it would. Single Precision is now scoring 18,941 as opposed to 2,845. And when it comes to gaming, our performance is just through the roof compared to the iGPU. Forza Horizon 5 Ultra Settings 1080p, we're seeing an average of around 148 FPS, and before we definitely had to drop those settings down to low. And we had to go back to Cyberpunk 2077. I'm a huge fan of NVIDIA's frame gen. Right now we're at ultra settings, frame gen on, and DLSS is set to auto. We're at 1080p. Yeah, this thing will run this game at 1440, no problem at all, over 60 FPS. So overall, yeah, the new 2024 Kados Mind is a really nice upgrade on the CPU side and even iGPU side when you compare it to the first generation with that 13th gen Tiger Lake CPU. One of my favorite upgrades here is the fact that we do have Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 on the unit. That was a big downside with the original. It was kind of like they wanted you to buy that graphics stock. And I understand, yeah, everybody wants to make a little money. But if we have the ability to go ahead and connect an eGPU that we already own, I think it'll be more appealing for people to pick something like this up. I will have at least one more video coming up soon. There's a few extra things that I want to test here. But if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link to the Kados website down below. Right now, for the uh, new 2024 model, they are doing a crowdfunding campaign, so I'll also leave that link in the description. If there's anything else you want to see running on the new 2024 Mind in my next video, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.